Good morning, class six. We start with a new lesson today. Lesson nine: the living organisms, its characteristics and habitat. Now, what do you mean by a living organisms? All the living thing around you are called as living organisms, right? Does the living organism live on its own, or does it have requirements? it needs certain things you need certain things to live don't you you need uh, water you need air you need food so living things cannot be on their own they take things from their surroundings so the environment around a living organisms can be divided into two components the biotic and the a biotic the biotic component consists of all living things which includes plants animals and the living things very small living things that you can't see the fungus bacteria everything the a biotic component consists of all the non living things around you including water soil air light minerals etc there is always things which are being exchanged between the biotic and the abiotic components if you see the biotic components you have what is called as the green plants or the producers they make food with the help of sunlight so see the green plants take sun's energy water from the soil and minerals from the abiotic components to make food this food is passed on to the consumers all the herbivores and the carnivores forms the consumers they take food from the plants or other animals but again take water and air from the abiotic components when these plants or animals die what happens it decomposes there are small bacteria fungi present in the soil which break down these organisms and return their mineral back to the soil so there is always an interaction going on between the biotic and the abiotic components of the ecosystem there is a branch of science which deals with the relationship between a living organism and its environment we call this branch of science as ecology so what is ecology ecology is the study of relationship between any organism and its environment and how there is a balance in this equation in this relationship that is what is ecology now there is a certain place if you uh, see um, if you think about a particular animal you find a picture coming to your mind for example think of camel in which of these places will the camel fit yes when you think about camel you think about the desert so there are certain animals associated with a particular type of place isn't it can an animal live in all different places no it needs certain place it needs certain environment to live and that is what is a habitat so what is a habitat a habitat is a natural surrounding where a living organism lives a habitat provides an organism with everything it needs to survive such as food shelter and proper climatic conditions habitats are generally divided into two types we call them as terrestrial habitat or land habitats all land habitats are called as 
terrestrial habitats see a picture on the on your left side you find different types of land habitats we have the desert the polar region habitat the rainforest the mountains and the plains which can include grasslands as well as forest on the right hand side you see aquatic habitat what do you understand by aquatic habitat all water habitats are called as aquatic habitats they may include fresh water habitats all water bodies which have got fresh water like ponds lakes rivers and streams and then you have salt water habitats which is the open sea the coastal regions the backwaters etc and there is an aquatic habitat which, which is in between for example take the places where the river meets the oceans we call these places as estuaries in these places also there this is also a different type of an aquatic habitat now let us discuss each of these habitats in detail the first see what happens when an organism leaves its natural habitat can it survive you see two pictures here one is of a habitat one is of an organism what is a habitat it's a grassland right there's a lot of grass see so it's a grassland habitat and what animal do you see on the right side yes it's a polar bear can you imagine a polar bear leaving all that beautiful snow coming and living in this grassland no why because its characteristics its features are suitable only to live in the very cold region it cannot live in this hot grassland even if it can live it will not be happy it will not live for long so what did we learn we learned that in order to live in a particular habitat an animal has features or characteristics that help it to live in its natural habitat and we call this as adaptation right so what is adaptation features or characteristics that help the plant or animal to survive in its natural habitat is called as adaptations plants and animals both show adaptations when there is a change in its environment isn't it when the weather becomes very cool what do you do do you wear the same summer clothes sleeveless um, uh, uh, tops and uh, shorts no when the weather changes in the december november months you go on to wear full pants isn't it you change because the outside environment has changed you also change similarly these plants and animals also show changes or adaptations according to the change in the environment but what happens if they are not able to change if you don't wear a sweater and continue to wear sleeveless on a cold december morning what will happen you will fall sick right similarly if these plants and animals do not change do not adapt what happens they may even die or become extinct remember extinct plants or animals are, are those plants and animals which lived long long ago but we cannot find them today because today's environment is not suitable for these plants and animals and they have died so in this lesson basically we are going to learn the adaptations shown by different plants and animals in different habitats so let us take the first habitat the first habitat that i have chosen is a desert habitat remember the desert it has got very 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 less 
water almost no water lot of hot sand and it is very 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 hot but at the same time the nights are very very cold so what type of plants live in these deserts do we find plants at all yes we do find plants and we call them as xerophytes the plants living in a desert are called as xerophytes or more common name is cactus plants mullu chedi as you would call in tamil so what features they have what adaptations do these plants living in the desert show the first adaptation is it has got very 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 long and deep roots because it has to go search for water which is not easily available in the desert so if you have a small plant the root may be several times longer than the plant itself do you find any leaves in such plants no there are no leaves all the leaves have been changed into spines or thorns or mullu as you would call in tamil why is that when there is leaf there is lot of water loss due to transpiration and we want to avoid this right so the plant has done away with the leaves the leaves have been totally removed and instead of them we have got spines the stem then when there is no leaf who will do the work of photosynthesis the stem becomes green in color and starts the work of photosynthesis so you don't find any brown stems in the cactus but the stem itself is green in color the stem apart from making the food or photosynthesis also stores water that is why you find the cactus plants very thick and fleshy if you happen to cut one you'll certainly find lot of water inside them even the stem may lose water for that a waxy coating is covered the stem to reduce the water loss what about the animals that live in the desert the animals too have adapted to live in the desert most of the animals live deep inside burrows which are very cool they come out only during the morning or the evening cool hours to hunt for food or to search for water during the hot day time they do not come out another interesting thing is water as you know there is no water in the desert then how do these animals survive these small animals as you have seen there are very small animals which live in the desert mostly insects reptiles etc so they generally depend on the dew drops remember the des in the desert the nights are very very cold and because of the coldness some of the water vapor in the air may changed into dew drops settling on the cactus plant or on the rocks and this is what they drink and to in order to get this they have to get up early in the morning come out to collect all the dew drops if they miss this then there is no water for them until the next day morning now coming to the camel the ship of the desert do we call it the ship of the desert simply no this animal is a wonderful animal which is totally totally adapted to live in the desert see those long legs it keeps the hot desert sand away from the body it has got a leathery tongue which is able to pluck leaves from even thorny trees the nostrils and the eyelashes help to keep the sand out during a desert storm 
the hump the wonderful hump on the camel's back stores food in the form of fat so the camel can actually go without food for a long long time and the most wonderful part is its stomach the stomach is the part which stores lots and lots of water so that the camel can go without water for a few days the padded and the very thick soles of the feet help the camel to walk on the hot desert sand without its feet sinking inside so this is the ship of the desert an animal which is totally totally adapted to live in the desert Let's move on to the next habitat. This time, right from the desert, we move on to the cool, cool mountains. So, how is the weather in the mountains? It is very cold. Most of the time, it is very, very cold, windy, with lots of rain and sometimes snow. Look at the trees. Let us see how the trees are adapted. Do you find a particular shape of the tree? Yes, they are cone shaped. So most of the trees which grow in the mountains are shaped like a cone. Is there a particular reason for this? Yes. If you see the cone shape, the water and the snow which gets deposited on the branch will not be there for a long time but will slide down. thus protecting the branch from damage or breaking if you take a look, close look at the leaves the leaves are not broad at all like the leaves that we find in the plains they are rather needle like this is again for the reason that water and snow will slide off easily from it these mountain trees do not have flowers why because of all the snow and the rain the flowers can easily get damaged and no seed is going to be produced instead these mountain plants have very strong woody cones which are e- easily able to withstand the wind and the rain and are able to produce seeds let us see what are the animals that you see in the mountain habitat you see small animals like the squirrels then you have lot of goats sheep the pumas the yaks the llamas living in the mountains how do these adapt to the cold mountain conditions most of these animals if you see they have a thick fur or hair you and i need to wear sweaters when we go to uti these animals the nature itself has given them a sweater in the form of thick fur or hair which helps the animal to keep warm many of these animals also form large groups and stay together close together each other in groups this also helps them to keep themselves warm some of these animals have a layer of fat just under the skin which makes them look very very fat this in turn helps them to keep warm in order to climb the steep mountains the mountain goats and the sheep have very strong hooves which help them to climb the mountains let's move on to the next habitat as you see because of lot of grass what name can you give to this land habitat we call it grasslands so grasslands are habitat which has got lot of grass with very very few trees in it the grasses can grow very tall indeed and they are stem if you see it's very very flexible because most of the grasslands are quite windy rains are present but they are very seasonal and after a few months it becomes very very dry so 
so the roots are very very strong and they make the soil where they grow very very fertile so most of the grasslands if you see we have removed all the grasses and have changed it into farmlands most of the grasslands the natural grasslands on earth are now the food bowls which produce lot of food for the entire world the leaves are very very small to reduce again water loss and even if there are trees they also have very very small leaves to cut down the water loss or reduce the water loss what kind of animals do do you think you'll find in a grassland habitat since grasses are plenty you will naturally see that there are lot of herbivores or grass eating animals like the wild buffaloes deer zebras giraffes etc these animals which are food for the carnivores are called as prey these animals the deer giraffe zebras are called as the prey they have very very strong molars to chew the grass they have very long ears which help them to hear the sound of the predators they have eyes on the sides so that if they are even busy eating grass they can see from their peripheral visions from their side eyes if there is any predator around they can run very very fast and they live in large groups you know what they say there is safety in numbers if you are afraid you always form large groups and move na these animals also follow the same so these are the characteristics of the prey which live in the grassland habitat let's move on to the predators the animals the carnivores which have the herbivores or the prey as its food they have very very strong claws to hunt the prey they have eyes right in the front to locate the prey and they use camouflage to hunt the prey can you see the majestic lion see how it is among the dry grass it is one it it has got the same color in the background right the next few pictures will tell you more about camouflage see the leopard hiding in the grass you can hardly make out if it had turned its face on the other side we would have never detected that there is a leopard in the grass see the tiny moth on your right hand side sitting on the bark of a tree see its pattern completely matches the pattern on the bark so what are these animals doing they have a color they have a shape which matches its surrounding or background which makes it very very difficult for us to detect them this is what is camouflage so a camouflage are features that an animal body has like its shape or color which helps it to match it to its surroundings so that it cannot be noticed very very easily in the grasslands both the prey and the predator use camouflage techniques the prey to protect itself from the predator and the predator to hunt its prey without being noticed here are a few more pictures on camouflage see the beautiful leaf insect on the left hand side sitting on the leaf it looks one like the leaf can you even understand that it is an insect it's very difficult for us see on the right this insect is called a stick insect it just looks like a piece of stick nobody would think that this is an animal so the stick insect and the leaf insect are both very good examples of 
camouflage. Now, look at the picture on the left. You just see the white background. If the polar bear's nose was also white, we would have never detected that it is right there in the snow. See how it is blending inside the snow? We can never detect it unless it moves. What animal is there on your right side? Can you guess? Yeah, it's a green snake sitting folded right in the middle of leaves. You cannot even detect that it is a snake. So these are some of the examples of camouflage. With this, we, finish, we come to the end of all the terrestrial habitats. And the next video, as a continuation of this lesson, we'll start the discussion about the water or aquatic habitats.